Sup, Chooms. So I'm back with some pre-news that just came out yesterday. On May 11th, our Chooms over at the Kintour Corporation in China published on their websites the results of the Phase 2 study conducted in the United States on pyrolutamide, also known as KX826. Now, my last update on pyrolutamide was way back in August when the preliminary results for the Phase 2 study conducted in China were published. This new data, though, is from the United States Phase 2 trial, which means pyrolutamide has made a major step forward towards becoming a full-blown FDA-approved treatment for hair loss. Kintor is currently conducting parallel studies in China and in the United States with the hopes of getting both Chinese and FDA approval of the drug as soon as possible. So the fact that the Phase 2 study has been completed in the United States is a cause for absolute celebration. And that's especially since the data we've gathered on the treatment so far has proven that it is likely going to be very effective and safe as both an adjunctive therapy as well as possibly even a full-blown substitute for 5AR inhibitors. The reason I am especially enthusiastic about pyrolutamide is because based on all the data we have so far, this treatment looks like it will be a good option for people who are on finasteride and also want a strong adjunctive therapy to give them additional protection, and it looks like it will be a good option for the small number of people who cannot use finasteride due to side effects. Finasteride minoxidil are of course fantastic treatments, but new innovations in hair loss therapy will give more people more options and make treating hair loss more easily obtained. So I'm very excited about this. So I've already talked a lot about pyrolutamide and I'll link my previous videos on the treatment below, but to give you a summary of what it is exactly, pyrolutamide is a topical antigen receptor blocker. So it doesn't work like finasteride, which is a 5-AR inhibitor that stops the conversion of testosterone into DHT. An androgen antagonist like pyrolutamide works by attaching to the antigen receptor on the hair follicle, thus making it harder for DHT to bind with the receptor and destroy the hair follicle. So this makes pyrolutamide especially valuable since not only does it address the root cause of androgenic alopecia, namely androgens, but it does so in a way differently from 5AR inhibitors, which gives it synergistic utility with existing treatments in addition to offering people who can't use finasteride another option to treat their hair loss. Pyrolutamide is hardly the first topical androgen antagonist on the market. There are also other available options like RU5841, Clascoterone, and Fluoridol, but the problem with these treatments is that they they either lack clinical data, such as the case with RU5841, or they're just not very effective. Pyrolutamide is a different beast altogether, though, as it is stronger than other androgen antagonists. So whether or not it is stronger than finasteride, though, isn't something we can determine yet, but pyrolutamide absolutely is the strongest androgen antagonist that exists today, and I made a video comparing pyrolutamide to other topical anti-androgens, which I'll link below if you want a more thorough explanation of that. So. It is also worth mentioning that Kintor has another hair loss treatment in the pipeline, which is even more promising than pyrolutamide called GT20029. And what GT20029 is, it is a protag molecule, meaning it doesn't just block antigen receptors, instead it outright annihilates them. The only problem though, is that GT20029 is not as far along in its development as pyrolutamide, so we'll be getting pyrolutamide first. But if you wanna know more about GT20029, I have made several videos on the drug, which I'll link below if you're interested in that subject. So like I said, pyrolutamide is very close to being released, likely just about a year away or possibly even sooner. Also, the preliminary results have been very encouraging. So far, the other androgen receptor blockers that are available that I have mentioned haven't been very effective, and therefore they are seen more as adjunctive therapies to 5AR blockers like finasteride and dutasteride. I mean, that's great, of course. There is nothing wrong with adjunctive therapies, but it would be nice to have an androgen blocker that is more powerful and could potentially be used as a standalone therapy. Usually, when people tell me that they get side effects on finasteride, I'll tell them to lower the dosage of the drug, and the truth is, is that finasteride can be lowered to doses as low as even 0.1 milligrams daily and still be effective, and I'll link my video where I talk about that below, but as great and versatile as finasteride is, I'll be the very first to admit that there are some people who just cannot use it at any dosage, and that is why I'm hopeful that pyrolutamide will fill that gap for hair loss suffers. So what were the results of the phase two trial for pyrolutamide in the United States? So this study was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study that enrolled 123 men with androgenic alopecia. So this is a top-tier study design. The men had Norwood scales ranging from Norwood 3 to 5, so we're talking significant hair loss here, chimps. So when doing phase 2 trials, one of the goals of the drug company is trying to find the best dose for their drug. And so in this study, 93 subjects were randomly assigned to different doses 
doses of pyrolutamide. These doses were 0.25% daily, 0.5% daily, and 0.5% twice per day. 30 subjects just got a placebo topical treatment. The results showed that at the highest dose, hair counts increased by 10 hairs per square centimeter compared with baseline, and this was a statistically significant change. The increase in hair counts with pyrolutamide was greater than with placebo control group and was related to pyrolutamide dosage. Just like the phase two trial from China, the 0.5% twice a day dose was determined to be the optimal dose of the drug. So that's the dose that will be used in the phase three trials in the United States and globally. Regarding pyrolutamide safety profile, the researchers concluded that pyrolutamide, quote, demonstrated a favorable safety profile in male androgenic alopecia treatment, unquote. Most of the adverse effects were mild and there was some local scalp sensitivity, but that was similar to what was seen in the placebo control group. There were no side effects severe enough to cause patient withdrawal from the study, and there were no deaths, thank goodness. So, the rest of the press release just notes that there are multiple clinical studies ongoing in China and the United States, including for female androgenic alopecia. Phase 3 studies have already started in China, and the results of that trial should be available by the end of this year. Phase 3 studies should start very soon in the United States, so this is the real deal we're talking about here, Chooms. This isn't some theory that explains everything. We're talking about an actual FDA-approved topical treatment for androgenic alopecia that is safe and has at least comparable efficacy to 5AR inhibitors. That is fantastic news because it means more people are going to be able to keep their mops. So this is a small but still very significant update for a very promising treatment. So that's pretty much it as far as news goes. With the two phase two study results now out, we now know that over 250 subjects have received pyrolutamide without any serious side effects and the hair growth potential looks very good. Now. I know a lot of people are eager to get their hands on this product as soon as possible, and I'm not going to recommend for or against that, but it is worth mentioning that Kintor is definitely cracking down very hard on grade market sources for this drug. Antigen Inc., for instance, was given a cease and desist letter, which forced them to withdraw the product, and I think today the only person who still sells it is Hairliciously, although I wouldn't be surprised if Kintor forces him to stop selling it soon, too. But... This is actually good news because it shows that Kintor is very serious about releasing this drug and it will be available very soon, probably about a year if not sooner. So 2024 will officially be the year where finasteride and utasteride finally actually have some legitimate competition. And even as the internet's biggest finasteride fanboy in the entire world, I welcome that competition. So rejoice, hair loss witchers. Pyrolutamide is almost here. Talk to you all later. God bless.